If you're an Airbnb host or want some Airbnb market data, I'm going to show you how to legally scrape data from Airbnb's website without violating their terms of service. To get started, simply go to the regular Airbnb website in your web browser. I suggest using Chrome. Type in whatever mark you want to get the listings from, and I highly suggest putting in an exact check-in and check-out date. I'll specify why later, but in the front end, they don't show you the average night per price anymore, so it's nice to compare apples to apples. You can put in the number of adults if you want, but we can filter this on later on in another step I'll show you. Now, before hitting this search button, this is very important, right click somewhere next to the page and then hit inspect so we can legally record the raw network data that Airbnb sends to our browser as we perform our search. Now, once we hit search, we're gonna begin recording the data Airbnb sends. Namely, all this JSON data used to populate these search results. While there are over a thousand results for our search, we'll only be able to scrape what Airbnb shows us on the website, which is about a few hundred per search. If you wanna take a closer look at what's going on, look for this stay search endpoint here. You'll see where the raw data is coming from. Then click on this preview tab and you can see the actual JSON. It's very, very deep and confusing to work with, but don't worry, our HAR file web scraper will help us deconstruct this and download the data as a CSV file. You can see I eventually found something along the lines of listing here, so I can see the name, and this corresponds to the first listing we find over here, as well as getting the price data, which is buried even deeper in this JSON. So one page of results is great, but we probably want all 15, so just click this next arrow and wait for the next page of results to load. It will also be recorded in the web browser. And then just keep scrolling down and clicking next. I know it seems tedious, but it will literally only take 60 seconds. And by doing this, we're not violating the Airbnb terms since we're not using any automated tools or software to access their website. We're simply manually browsing their site. We just so happen to be recording and intercepting the web traffic they send to us. When we get to the last page, we can see all 15 of these requests are now captured in a web browser and recorded. To get them out of here, we, under the Network tab, click this little arrow here called Export HAR, and then save this file to your computer. You can also use any of these filters here, like you can adjust the price range to what you want to scrape, and you can also check out these advanced filters underneath the price selector, like the number of bedrooms you want, as I mentioned earlier, beds, etc., and all these special amenity options you want to scrape. The only catch is you're going to want to clear out your web browser data before exporting another HAR file. So I like to clear everything down here under the network tab and there's this little icon on the upper left called clear. So please click this before you export another batch. And what I like to do is select a category, for example, amazing views, select another one that will load everything up again, then just clear it again and then select the category you really want. That way we have a clean slate and again, have any filters applied like we do. We only have 36 results here, meaning we only have to scrape three pages of data here to export this micro data. Now to get the data out of this HAR file, you can use the HAR file web scraper, link in the description. This is a freemium tool available to the public, and you can see it auto-magically identified the most interesting data, those 15 requests from our search results from Airbnb. So we can see the fields here, and we can also see all the media captured inside the HAR file, photos of the listings, and the 15 pages of raw data corresponding to all these 15 pages that we just browsed through and legally recorded the data from. Using the tool, you can download the full JSON from those individual 15 requests, but if you want to combine them, you can use this parse group feature here, which will automatically combine everything into a table you can download as a CSV. Look for this second result here, map search results. It should be the second one, but just double check in case it's not. You can see we got about 500 results from that search and we can combine more searches later on if we need to. We can see the basic fields that we noticed on the initial website. We'll do a deep dive into these at the end of the video. Now, if you want to download this CSV file, you can sign up for a free account with my service and download up to 10 results per day for free. Here's what it looks like when you're logged into your account. Again, make sure on map search results. If you want unlimited downloads, the price is only $49.99 US at the time of this video. Click this button here and it will download the results into a CSV file. You can also check out some of these other collections like this contextual photos or for whatever reason you want all the photos. This CSV file will be about 3000 rows and contain the combined URLs to all the photos of all the search results. So I don't know, maybe if you're doing interior decorating or something, this could be useful. Once you have the CSV file, you can upload it to Google Sheets or open it in Excel or open it up with Python. Whatever you want to do is up to you. You just need to abide by any laws, like you can't republish this data as is or else you may violate copyright infringement. So double check the laws if you wanna do anything outside of your own private research. I did clean up this file a bit. There are a lot of useless columns just due to how Airbnb sends the data over, but you can see one of the most important columns here is ID which corresponds to any URL you want to check out. So just put in airbnb.com slash room slash ID 
and that will send you over to the raw listing that you want to check out. You can verify the title corresponds to the data captured in the spreadsheet here, as well as all these other different fields. If you have any questions as to what these mean, it's good to just double check with the official website. For example, here's the rating, and it shows you the average star with the number of ratings. Unfortunately, they combine this into a single field, so you have to parse this out if you really want to do a deeper analysis on them. You can see other fields like city here. Most of them are in Las Vegas, some are in North Las Vegas. This will be helpful if you perform multiple searches. Other useful fields are the number of photos in the listing, as well as the listing type, if it's the entire house, a hotel, a private room, etc. You can also see the general latitude and longitude. What's funny is when you find some of these are exactly the same, it may be by the same Airbnb host, or it could be the same building, so it's always interesting to check them out if you want to play detective for a little bit. This is because they will not be the exact coordinates since Airbnb keeps the address anonymous until you book. You can see a few other things like the number of beds over here, but if you're using a filter, this won't apply. If you want to check out the photo, you can click on this link here. It'll show you the first photo in the collection of photos, as we can confirm on the official website. Let's talk about price, which is by far the most confusing aspect here. This is because the Airbnb API returns more presentation-like data here. One exception is this price string, which you can see is populated for all listings. So this is why I recommend you only do one-night searches. That way you have everything at only one night. If you don't, you'll see this thing will be by either five or seven nights or some random combination, so your total price will not correspond to the number of nights easily. And to add to the confusion, this price string column here seems to correspond to the price before any taxes and ridiculous cleaning fees that are unnecessary. You can see the total price in this other price column here, but it's presented as a string. So you have to parse out total if you want to do anything numeric with it. But this shouldn't be a huge problem. Anyway, these pricing columns are really confusing. I suggest double and triple checking these as they are subject to change after filming this video. So please double check everything with the raw Airbnb data website before making any conclusions, especially with price. And over on the end are some more interesting columns revolving around the host. Some of the listings have a little host badge displayed, especially if they're a super host. So you can see this presentation column here. Again, it's really confusing because it's only populated for some listings, I think for Superhost, or if the listing has a really good rating, then it'll show these little badges. In addition to the host's first name, you can get the host's user ID on Airbnb if you want to look them up. So go to any page and then look at Airbnb users slash show and then punch in that ID there and you'll go right to that host's homepage. You can't contact them through here, but you can see some of their data like number of reviews and all their listings. You can see on this sheet if they're verified, if they're a super host or not. And then some other text about them, like since they've been hosting, etc. Again, it's kind of random. It's how Airbnb wants to present it on the website. You can also see a thumbnail to their image. And hosts with reviews, you can see the review count over here. Wow, this person has a lot of reviews, so you may want to go check them out and see what this person is doing to accumulate that much business. So you can see Kiyomi here is a super host, and she only has two listings, which is impressive. I wasn't sure if she, maybe she was a super airbnb -er, but maybe she's just been doing it for a long time. So if you want to do some local research market, you may want to check out some of these hosts and then scrape their own listing data. But I'm not sure, because I've never been an Airbnb host, so let me know in the comments what you're using this data for, and I'll make more videos. Thanks for watching.